uh, we're starting maybe a, a second or two late. <clears throat> was trying to get this thing actually started up on the computer, and uh, we'll we'll learn from that. Yep, go. Okay. I got my <clears throat> my faithful wife that's actually helped me, and I am so glad that uh, that she's doing that. Uh, first off, I am uh, thankful for uh, all of you that are signing on, and today being Veterans Day, I know that uh, Dusty was mentioning that on Sunday, and with it being Veterans Day, I just wanted to do a big shout out and, and a thanks. Uh, for all of you, our veterans, and being able to uh, serve this country and do us well, uh, God has blessed us in this place called America, and it is because of those veterans that have gone and served in this country and blessed us tremendously, and we are truly so thankful for that. Um, as I get into this uh, message today, I called it The Last Days. And uh, <clears throat> this it's not a bad thing, but it, as I was praying about things and about, you know, what we've been going through in this country uh, and in this year and how hard things have been, uh, I, I went to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And I'll go a little slow because I want to make sure people are getting online. But in 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says, This know also that in the last days, perilous, difficult, hard to deal with times shall come. Now, this last year has been super hard. Uh, all the storms, the hurricanes, the droughts, the fires, pandemic, chaos, and our, I mean, you know, the list could go on in the midst of uh, what has happened and then over the last uh, three weeks, um, how COVID has uh, impacted uh, our own body of believers. And, uh, you know, that's not our Father's plan, but it's the plan of the enemy. And, and when I mentioned in the last days there'll be difficult times, we think of those difficult times as all of these events that are happening you know, that are impacting our lives. But if you go on and read in the next verse of 2 Timothy 3, verse 2, it says, for men shall be. He's not talking about the events of COVID-19 and the storms. He said, there'll be perilous times because men shall be lovers of their own selves and covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. So we can look and see the things that have happened over this last year and says it's been a horrible time. But what really impacts us is when we uh, are disobedient to parents, when we're unthankful, when we're unholy. I mean, the list goes on. False accusers, uncontrolled, fierce despisers of those who are good, traitors. It says lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said of such, turn away. So when you're thinking of all the events that have taken place in this country over this year and how hard that is, that's not the perilous times. The perilous times is when our heart uh, or the hearts of men turn away from God. And that thing really just touched me because uh, there's actually uh, been times I've walked out in my yard and was thinking, you know, Lord, if COVID had not happened uh, this year, we probably wouldn't be going through some of the things that we're going through. But it's really got nothing to do with COVID. It's the heart of men. He says, it's perilous times because men have turned away. We've turned away. You know, America, in some cases, has turned away from uh, the things of the Lord. And, and I, I pray the message is going to touch and stir your heart and bring us to a place to where we say, even though all these things are happening, God is still working and moving in the midst of America. One of my favorite scriptures is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. 
And he said, keep and guard your heart above all that you guard with vigilance. Guard it, for out of it flows the issues of life. So we have an impact. If we will guard our hearts in the midst of all things going on, because like I was about to say, you know, if we're not careful, we can allow our thoughts to actually say, God, where are you? And he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He says, there's times hardness comes is when we pull away. Now, I'm not trying to say all of us are pulling away, but I'm saying for us to focus on him, for us to say, Lord, have your way in our lives. Have your way in the midst of America. Because Satan would love for us to blame God for all the things that have happened in America this year. And that's what the enemy wants. And for us to know in our hearts, God is for us. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. In the midst of all the things that have been a struggle, God's working in the midst of our lives. And if, if we, if we, the scripture says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if we, God's people, I mean, even though we may not be stopping storms and things like that, but we could take a stand. I was out the other day just crying, saying, oh, Lord, God, for a move of you in the midst of our hearts to where there's such fire in us that we're out on the streets, that we're in the highways and the hedges, and we're compelling people through the gospel to come. And, and even in the midst of all the struggles, we are still proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ, that he is the answer. Even with all this, it's gone in the midst of our church and the impact it's been against our bodies. Jesus is still the risen Lord. Still. He says, if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, and I know we've been praying, but I say, don't give up. Don't let your mind wander and say, boy, you know, God's forgotten us because he said, I will never. It doesn't matter the circumstance. I will never pull away from you. I'll never do that. So he says, I, as I was looking at this, and we talked about the last days perilous times, do you know also in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, he says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. He says it again. But this time he's not talking about perilous times. This time he says, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. So even though 2020 has been a hard year, it is God's desire. And we've been hearing it from prophecies of how that we're on the verge. You know, when the enemy's coming hard against us, we're on the verge of an explosion in, in the gospel and the declaration of Jesus Christ. He said, in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. We know this scripture. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men, and I'm not old, I'm, I think I'm still young, but I mean, I'm in, in between. But I'm telling you something. It is so amazing when we, we can get discouraged, but we turn our, our face toward the word of God. We turn our face toward our heavenly father and he will strengthen us even in the midst of COVID. And Lord, we do pray for those. There are some that have had, you know, Pastor Tim and, and, and most of us have had some kind of issue with this COVID, but God's bringing us through this. And he said, I will pour my spirit out. I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh. And I want to say, oh Lord, in the midst of this, let us lift our eyes up. Let us be encouraged in the midst of all of these things that have come against us. Jesus is still on the throne. He's still on the throne. And God's still God of heaven and earth. So as I was looking at this, in, in Luke chapter 2, now listen to this. When the angel came to the shepherd saying, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people for in the city of David has been born Christ the Lord. In that glorious declaration that was made, do you know 
Israel was under the Roman rule. So I want to tell you something. When everything's around you that may seem to be coming against you, God's speaking. And he's speaking strength. He's speaking peace. The Spirit of God is declaring good things to you. He said, great joy has come because the Messiah is born. Let him be born in us. Let the Spirit of God and let ourselves stir ourselves up in our most holy faith. But, you know, Jesus didn't come to set them free from Roman rule. He came to set them free from Satan's rule. He came preaching. The I almost want to get up, but I'd get away from the phone. But he came preaching a kingdom of heaven that brought peace and joy, brought healing. So, you know, as, as, as you're stopping and thinking uh, about some of the things that have maybe been going on in the midst of your life and in your family, because there's still some that are maybe quarantined at home, or you're thinking about uh, maybe what you've seen on the news about the election and all these kind of things, we have to focus ourselves on, as we said, if my people called by my name will turn to me and seek my face, and cry out, he goes, you'll hear. You'll hear from heaven. So I say, what do we do? Because even the children of Israel that got that glorious message from the angels, and even in the midst of Jesus' walk, they were still under Roman rule. But the king of glory was there. So with all the things that may be seemingly going on around us, there is hope in America. There is hope in the body of Christ. And the things we've been hearing is that outpouring that God wants to do will be greater than we have ever seen. If we can raise our expectations to say COVID's going to be behind us, all these other things are going to be behind us, and we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to be encouraging one another. You that are still feeling COVID, Lord, we declare health and healing. You that are struggling with peace, Lord, we declare peace in the name of Jesus. And, and there's a scripture, and, I, and I've got scriptures. I'm a guy that likes scriptures because the word of God is so important. He said in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, what are some of the, if there's medicines that we can take, what is it? In the midst of all these struggles, he says rejoice evermore. <laughs> He said, pray without ceasing. He said, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. I'm not saying you say, oh, Lord, I thank you that I've got COVID. No, but in the midst of your situations, you are not alone. And the word and the spirit of God brings life to us, brings joy to us, brings peace to us. And even Jesus, he said in Mark 11, 22, have faith in God, not in the government, not in this election. I mean, there's things we're hearing, but focus ourselves on the word of God. Focus ourselves on the promises of God. He said in Hebrews chapter 11, we know the scripture. We, we know the reference, but in the midst of all of that, he says, have faith in God. Speaks of hard times. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not yet seen. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on the word of God. Stand strong and, and let us cry together that there will be such an outpouring and a stirring in our heart that we say, Lord, let me be used to present this gospel in the goodness of you. It goes on. And it says, Abram believed God. I mean, we know some of these things. I'm going to just mention a little bit. But Abram believed God to be the father of many nations, and he became that. It says, by faith, Moses, he was in Egypt 40 years, got out, went into, the, uh, in, into an area uh, away from Egypt for 40 years. And then God called him back, and by faith, Moses went back and did so if there's things that have been hindering you, let God be God in the midst of your life and let him be able to put you back on the track to where you can go and be obedient and do what he's called you to do. 
Moses also patiently waited 40 years with the children of Israel to go back, to go into the promised land. And he never made it. But in the midst of it, God was doing great and mighty things. It goes on in verse 32 through 37. It says, what shall we say more? For Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David and Samuel of the prophets who subdued kingdoms. God has things for us to walk in right now that are glorious, that are full of power, that are full of strength, that are full of the anointing of God to be able to break strongholds in the midst of our lives, in the midst of the church, in the midst of America, in the midst of this globe. He has in his word and in the spirit of God a strength in us that we can conquer, that we can walk in the things of God in such a way that the lives around us are touched. It says they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They obtained promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. It says they quenched the violence of fire. We remember those. We see those things coming into play. You know, as we read the word, they escaped the edge of the sword. They were made out of weakness, they were made strong. So even if you're coughing, even if you're still running a fever, declare that Jesus is Lord and his power, the healing power of God still works. It says women received their dead back to life again. Some were being tortured, but they, they said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some Others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yes, moreover, bonds of imprisonment. It says they were stoned. They were sawn asunder. But that doesn't sound good. They were tempted, slain with the sword. They wandered about. All these things, all these things, they hid in caves. But you know what? They overcame. The next chapter says... Wherefore, seeing we, me and you, are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses that have gone on before us and in the midst of their lives, and they've seen struggle, but they became victorious. And he says, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset us. And that's what I'm saying. When, when the enemy comes and all these things begin to really build up in us uh, of our struggles and, and maybe uh, of what's happening in the country, we can begin to doubt that God's even doing something. We can be distracted. We can be discouraged. And I'm telling you, Jesus said, have faith in God. And he says, lay aside the sin that does so be, be e <laughs> that's easy for me to say, the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and that was us, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he's now set on the right hand of the Father. So I'm almost about to close, but I want you to understand something. Whatever you're going through, he says, stand strong. He said, lift up your eyes. He said, look to me. He said, because I'm your strength. I'm your help. And, and God is not done with this country called America. And I really believe that we're on the edge of an outpouring of the Spirit of God. Pastor Tim has been declaring that about the fire of God and not just for Victory Fellowship. But this is to, to encompass America encompass the globe and even though the enemy and what we say there are perilous times but the perilous times is when men turn away from God and we are not those that are going to do that we are those that are going to continue to pray we're going to turn our hearts to him and say Lord have your way all of these things that come against us we are still going to stand strong like I said when the angel proclaimed the goodness of the birth of Jesus they were under Roman rule. So even though things come against us and seem to be so hard, sometimes maybe we're confused. We, we feel like maybe God's left us or we don't understand. 
Let's encourage one another. Let's lift up one another. Let's be quick to, uh, if, if the Lord leads, to be able to call somebody and say, hey, or send them a card while I'm thinking of you. Because uh, sometimes uh, we all get discouraged. Uh, sometimes we all, uh, you know, are not thinking uh, good thoughts. Uh, we feel like God's forgotten us or, you know, we're, we're just in a tight spot. But he tells us, he says in Philippians 4, 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest or just, those things that are pure, those things that have good report, those things that have virtue, that have praise, think on these things. As you pray, don't back up on your prayers. Declare the blessings of the Lord. Declare them over your family. Declare them over America. Cry out and say, oh God, I thank you that you're not done, that you're moving in my life that you are bringing healing in the midst of my life, that you are bringing strength, that you are pouring out of your spirit in a mighty way in my family, in my church, in my, in my business. He says, all of those things that are good, let your mind remain on that. And when the enemy comes and tries to tell you God's not working in, in your behalf, just say, you're a liar. Because the word says that he is for me and not against me. So I say to you, and I've been having to speak this to myself, don't be discouraged. Encourage yourself. Uh, find good words. Find good messages. Speak to yourself. There's a scripture that says, speaking to ourselves in hymns and songs and spiritual songs, making melody in our heart to the Lord. So you can choose to make sure the thoughts that you have are thoughts that are going to build you up, thoughts that are going to encourage you, thoughts and words that are going to bless others around you. God's not backed up. He's not, he's not given up on this place called America. I believe we're going to see God's mighty hand in, in the coming months. And if the prophecies that are coming out are true, there is going to be such a great move of God that things will not look like anything like they look like now. Pastor Tim's been talking about getting out of the church and, and being uh, evangelizing in the midst of our community. I see us on fire. I see us in a place, not just in here, but across America to where we go into the streets. We declare the gospel and we see the mighty hand of God moving in the midst of this country. So I say to you, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged because Jesus is still on the throne. And his will is for you to walk in the strength and the blessing. His will is for you to be filled with the spirit of the Lord. So I say to you tonight, even though all this stuff is going on, Lift up your eyes, lift up your hearts, and let him touch you in a mighty way. Father, I thank you for your word. I pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would just cover our hearts and our thoughts and allow us to be in that place to where when the enemy comes and tries to make accusations or tries to beat us down, that we have your word that speaks to us, that we have your word that rises up in us and we say no. You said not to yield ourselves to the enemy. I pray strength in my brothers and sisters. I pray peace in them, Lord, that they're able to stand and say, God is for me and he's not against me. And Lord, I thank you that you're working you're working in America. You're working across this globe. And I thank you for the outpouring of your spirit in a mighty way. I thank you for peace and strength and blessings upon my brothers and sisters. And may this word help you. May it bless you. May it build you up in Jesus' name. Be blessed. Amen.